Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash deconversion. They've got over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Let me know when you're ready. Welcome. <laughs> That's aggressive. <laughs> That's me. Yay. I'm Karen. I'm Bonnie. And this is Deconversion Therapy post Thanksgiving. So, how was your Thanksgiving? Um, when people ask me that, and they have a lot in the last two days, I tell them it was boring and that is just the way I like it. Yeah. So it's not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. How about yours? <laughs> well, it was hectic because <laughs> nobody knows how in my family to do the everyone come bring food. Oh, everyone needs it heated up at different times, but we want to sit down. So, you know, it's like, everyone in the kitchen running around and then sit and eat and talk over each other. But it was good. Mm -hmm. So everybody brings a different thing. Yeah. So I did the turkey this year, although it was a little on the dry side, but whatever. And then I have the vegan daughter who did some thing. And then, yeah, the rest of my family. Something. You just glossed over it. Yeah. Well, it was just for her. Like she made her own and you oh, said she forgot the tofurkey. She did, but she was really excited when she got back to her apartment late at night to have it all to herself, probably in front of Netflix and just be like, this is the life. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was really fun. And I turned to the patriarch of the family. Yes, sorry, I say that, but um, <laughs> I'm also half Hispanic. So that's the way it goes. And I say you turn into the patriarch. No, I turned to the Uh patriarch and said, would you like to say a prayer? Because I know that really means something to Mm -hmm. him. So Mm -hmm. that's what we did. And it doesn't, you know, for that, because I'm so close to him and feel like that's my way of loving him at this age. Yeah. Yeah. Like do your, do your prayer thing. That's right. And And it's not just tolerating it. You even suggested it. Yeah. And so when he started, I got out my phone and played Candy Crush (laughs) on volume. (laughs) (laughs) Well, my mom and I are very, I don't know what other word to use for this than like touchy feely to start with emotionally. Uh So I will at least once or twice a day say, I'm so glad you moved back to Florida and you picked this and, and you're this and that. And she'll say it all the time too, except she'll use blessed. And I'm like, "Mm, okay. (laughs) And, um, God has been this to me and I'm like, all right. Okay. (laughs) So, um, and so, you know, we say that all the time. So Thanksgiving to us is kind of just because it's just us another day. Exactly. Where we eat together. Right. <laughs> and it, no, to clarify that where I cook. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. But she did the prep. So that was a very helpful, nice thing. Right. Did you have turkey? No, I, I don't. If I could never have turkey again, I'd be so happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, because the best part of the turkey is that underneath thing called the oyster. Do you know what I mean? Nope. It's called the chef's reward. No. It's the nice moist part that's nope. underneath the thighs. Anyway, you said you gotta everything flip the over. that makes me want to hurl. What? Okay. <laughs> moist under. Oh, oh okay. I'm all done. Thighs. Didn't say moist underpants. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. Changing this to the explicit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so nope. We had shrimp and steak. Oh, that's good. Yeah, surf and turf. 
y'all surf and turf. And um, so the conversation sometimes was she would start a conversation or she would start saying something to me and I could tell where it was going. And so I think it's funny and I hopefully it wasn't mean, but (laughs) (laughs) yeah. I would cut her off. And so one of them was, you know, the other day I was out and I saw the sign for an Arby's. And (laughs) I said, is this going to be a story with a beginning, middle and end? Right. And she goes, well, and then defiantly proceeds to tell me she went in and had a roast beef sandwich and it was good. The end. (laughs) The middle part is the action walking in and the climax. It, it was good. Yeah. Then, also, um, I heard twice that white potatoes make better potato salad. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. write that one down. So at the same time, these are not, you know, what I would imagine being the highlight of conversation in a David Sedaris household. I'm very happy that it wasn't, you know, we should go back to church or any kind of, you know, pressure that I know a lot of people are getting. Exactly. Exactly. And our family has definitely gone through the, the discussions and the talks and all that, um, and segue here. If you haven't listened to us before, <laughs> Bonnie and I have deconverted from evangelical Christianity. And that's what this is about. And we use humor. We've known each other for a long time and went to church together and have a lot of similarities. Um, and we have listeners who are still Christians and we have listeners who are Jewish. And But this is just our take on it. But For me, my family, we've gone through the discussions a lot, and they've been painful ones, or they've been positive ones, or whatever. So at holidays, we mostly get it. Like, you know, you You mostly stay away from it. Right, right, right. And like, you know, we pull back on all the, the belief things and just get into the the other stuff. But we're a lovey-dovey family. This year, Mm -hmm. we didn't go around and say what we're thankful for. Like, we kept getting getting busy talking about other things. And then um, my daughter wanted to teach us all a game, and we all did this game, and that was fun. So we didn't really get to do that. The best part was trying to get photos of us, which were... A disaster. So we finally get these great photos. My daughter's boyfriend is in town, so he took them. He did a great job. But then I realized Karen, who is lazy, so she has (laughs) transition lenses because she's too lazy. (laughs) Sunglasses and regular glasses. Looks like Roy Orbison. With her whole normal family. So <laughs> later we just took like a selfie um, right. inside. And I sent that one to you. Yeah. Well, the one you sent to me, I was so happy that it was live because you press it and you hear the before and after and everyone is just standing there frozen with their top teeth showing yeah giggling <laughs> exactly <laughs> we're just a disaster when it's- no that was great because it's just what you're doing when you're taking a picture but yeah. in your mind you have it all perfect like oh look at them they all just laughed at something in common Uh Uh-huh. And it's mostly like, what button do we push? (laughs) Like, how do I keep my teeth looking like this? Are my eyes open? (laughs) Yeah, it was, but yeah, it was, it was a good time. All of it was, I'm, I'm fortunate because I'm already hearing the disaster stories of people who stormed out of other people's Thanksgiving. Really? But you know, The more people you have, just in general, yes, you're going to have that. So, and that that can go the other way too, because if it's just me and mom, 
one thing and it can all be shot to hell. Right. Exactly. (laughs) And that's the thing. Like, I think it's a good idea. We always try and play a game and that keeps people's minds busy rather than sitting around and just being like, let's talk because yeah, yeah, that's just going to lead to something annoying. Yeah. And one of the other things that I really enjoy every Thanksgiving is that Seth Meyers has his family on as guests. Uh huh. And so it's fun to watch someone else's family <laughs> and um, them playing around with each other and playing Pictionary and just the dumb things that they do. Oh, I didn't see that. I do know that his yeah. brother ruined that 70s show. So his brother was on that 70s show? Yeah, yeah. So when the main guy... And was it Eric? Eric Foreman? Yeah, when he left the show, mm-hmm. Toe for Grace, then Seth Meyers' brother joined it, and he was awful. And he looks just like Seth Meyers, and he's a terrible actor. But, <laughs> um, yeah. But if you think about, like, uh, I know Toe for Grace stayed for the majority of the good part of the show. Yeah, he did. That thing had jumped the shark, I'm sure. Oh, for sure. By yeah. the time Josh got on there. Yes, Josh. That's his name. So but at home, they call him Posh. <laughs> <laughs> he does have good hair. Um, so I found out, I think it was the day before Thanksgiving, that there's there's a war on Thanksgiving. Um, that, that's not, that's, you mean from what the president said? Yes. That's horseshit. I know. (laughs) That's not true. He just wants to make it, we're going to say Merry Christmas again, part two. Exactly. And I'm like, it's like being drafted into a war you didn't know is going on. (laughs) Well, this all segues in no good way. (laughs) In no way. (laughs) To celebrities in Hollywood, because you read an article and you sent it to me, but as usual. Well, I'm I glad you didn't it. read it because because I have a lot of good things to say about it. Oh, good. The headline of the article is, Will Worship for Likes? And they're talking about Instagram likes. Yeah. Because it's an Instagram popular church, or at least they have an, a big presence on Instagram. Okay. So the subhead says, To build their celeb-approved mega church, Church Home, Pastors Judah and Chelsea Smith preach community, love, acceptance, and inclusion. Is their Instagrammable message truly reframing Christianity or simply helping their church rake in millions? Mm. I know. So that sounds a lot more salacious than the article is. Right. And the article is just kind of a profile. So I'm going to read some of that. Well, now you've now I'm ready for a letdown. I know. <laughs> I know. And that's why I'm like, you know what? This is going to be more lighthearted than than any kind of scathing indictment. Oh, so we'll add scathing. Okay. We'll add, uh, yeah, this is, we should just add some funny. Um so, yeah, and you know how when you read Cosmo magazine, the t- you know, the little teases on the front, exactly. it promises this great answer for something. Then you look in the article and like, well, it's kind of about that, but it doesn't answer the question that was burning on the front of the magazine. Exactly. It's and it's always the same thing. Yeah, it's like but how to please your man and then you And turn, it doesn't tell you. Right. And it's just like be nice. <laughs> I don't like know. A, my big beef. And it doesn't tell you. <laughs> So, okay, the article starts. Did I say her name? Say the author. Um, Something Swan. Yeah. Her name is Jennifer Swan. Mm -hmm. She wrote this for Marie Claire. Um, So it says... And honestly, this... It was good that I read this because (laughs) I did not know what to expect after this first paragraph. You might. Listeners might. So here it goes. In 1999, a young single mom named Patty Millette attended a Christian conference in Toronto, about 90 miles from her hometown in Canada. From the audience, she watched Judah Smith, then the co-leader of the youth ministry at the City Church, speak about the Bible and Jesus. 
He seemed cool and young, and she liked what he was preaching. She left the summit with a few recordings of his sermons. By the time she reached out to Judah and his wife, Chelsea Smith, with an invitation to attend one of her son's concerts at the Everett Arena in Washington, the Smiths had become co-lead pastors at the city church in nearby Seattle. I don't know if you've heard of my son, Chelsea remembers Millette saying, but he needs some good influences in his life. Would you come? It was 2010. Of course, the Smiths had heard of her son. Justin Bieber, then Mm -hmm. 16, was the most Googled person in the U.S. that year. Did you know where that was going when I read it? I was getting close when you (laughs) said concert and then you were going there. So... (laughs) Uh, in 2010, I think my daughters love Justin Bieber, and he came out with a movie. This was in the swishy hair, you know, <laughs> middle grade days. And so I had to take him to a full-on theater <laughs> Full. <laughs> now, the movie theater wasn't full, but... Oh. I took them there, and then I sat in back with my laptop, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not watching this thing. Of course, I became focused and obsessed with the movie, because when he was a kid, mm-hmm. he was just, that's the thing. He was so precocious musically that you mm-hmm. do get impressed, but that doesn't carry on as much when you're an adult. You're just, you know, you're just an average Joe, but got to bring the goods. That's right. But and the evolve. hair in the movie, <laughs> he swishes his hair, and then they do it again in slow mo. Uh-huh. Well, I as I was reading this, I and realized, oh my god, it's Justin Bieber. I'm like, any believer, <laughs> isn't that what they're called? Would have known the second I said the mom's name. Right. Yeah. That, no, I'm not that. <gasps> You're talking about Justin. <laughs> So the Biebs. So continuing, nearly a decade later, the Smith's non-denominational church, which has since been rebranded as Church Home, which when you read that at first and see the word spelled C-H-U-R-C-H-O-M-E, I was like, Churchami? Yeah, because they're sharing that H. Right. And you can't, <laughs> as an English professional... You and then I put an have, eight and R in there, like Chrome, like Chur Chrome. Yeah, yeah, that would be better. <laughs> Chur Chrome. So it's, it's the pretty. new, it's the new <laughs> internet server that takes yeah. out everything, uh, takes out so science it, articles. Okay, so it had been rebranded as Churchome, uh, Churchomi, Churchome has become one of the most influential Christian congregations in Hollywood. According to the Smiths, their church collectively draws more than 10,000 people every week to its five locations in Washington State and California, including its Wednesday evening service, that's familiar, at the historic Saban Theater in Beverly Hills, where it's not uncommon to find the front rows reserved for celebrities and the back doors staked out by paparazzi. The LA services have drawn the likes of Courtney Kardashian, Sierra and Russell Wilson and Selena Gomez. Well, so, that's when they were dating. I wonder if Selena Gomez has ditched all of that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. So then it goes on to say as church attendance in the U S declines and the number of Americans with no religious affiliation rises parentheses, a recent Gallup poll found that half of all adults belong to a house of worship in 2018 compared to an average of 68% throughout the seventies, eighties and nineties. That's a lot of dip. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, internet. Thanks. Thanks, Gallup. Uh, The Smiths want to reposition Christianity through positive storytelling, not through the messages of doom and gloom that other churches have preached in the past. And then, quote, in those dark times, the story got out there that Christians were a bit mean and harsh and judgmental. (laughs) A bit. (laughs) Did it get out there? It It got out. (laughs) A bit. Anyway, um, and looking for the wrong in people, says Chelsea Smith. 
Um, Fear-mongering televangelists like Jim Baker and Robert Tilton sermonized that those who didn't follow Jesus and those who didn't donate heavily to the church would face demons and end times. Then it says Baker was later indicted on multiple counts of fraud. (laughs) Yeah, they also didn't mention, but is back at it. Selling buckets. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Then it says Tilton, who was repeatedly accused of unethical fundraising, was unsuccessfully sued for fraud. Um, I want to do a whole show on Tilton. He's one of my favorites. Oh, well, then I can't wait to hear about that. Um, Let's see. They say that these megachurch scandals were not unique to the 80s, and then they list a lot of other ones, whatever. Um, But then it says, historically, most Christian megachurches have deemed those who partake in same-sex relationships or have an abortion to be sinners. A 2008 survey of America's 100 largest churches by policy tracking advocacy group (laughs) Church Clarity found that 94% were not LGBTQ affirming and 6% didn't disclose their stance. Exactly. But church home is different, says Charles. Mm-hmm. It's non-denominational. Its pastors say they love and accept everyone. They like modern art. Judah is an abstract painter. And tattoos, he and Bieber got matching ink. And sex, after marriage, but they won't judge you if you disagree. <laughs> <laughs> that messaging has been key to their meteoric rise and may be far more inclusive than the truth. Then they talked about Hillsong and how they've come under fire for barring its gay members. So I'm just glossing over that because that's negative, and we've talked about that before. Um, It says, in 2005, before he was insta-famous and buds with Bieber, Judah openly preached his unfiltered views. According to the Seattle Post-Intelligencer, which profiled Smith's growing popularity that year, he said he targeted followers ages 12 to 19 to get them young and told one such group that President Bush's Supreme Court nominations would be essential to determining whether or not we will continue to murder innocent lives in the womb of our women. The article also summarized his views on homosexuality. It's a sin the same as murder, rape, or living with your girlfriend friend, which begs the question, is church home truly expanding what it means to be a Christian? Or are the Smiths sleek storytellers who know what it takes to stay popular with Generation Z and millennials? But I have to say something. This is so annoying because 2005, okay, that was 16 years ago. Yeah. Is that the math? No, 15. I don't know. Yeah. We're in 2020 virtual, you know, for all intents and purposes. Yeah. So 15 years ago, okay, I would hope in 15 years someone might have grown. Yeah. Isn't exactly. that what we want? And yet you- when they grow <laughs> and change their minds, then we start saying, oh, it begs the question, are they just selling out to get more members? Right. I don't like that. Yeah. They were they were 25 back then. Now they're 41. They were 25, the pastors? Yeah. Oh my I mean, God, that should be illegal right there. <laughs> well, of course you're going to at 25 still buy into the stuff that you grew up with. So now they're 41 and they have kids and I hope to God that they've become a little bit more loving and accepting. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and they were. I mean, America in general progressed very quickly in the last few years. So hopefully. certainly we're not as far as some of us want us to be, but right. Compared. Yes. Anyhow. So, um, (laughs) I, I just, I'm just also taking part of this, um, article with, you know, I'm taking issue with the editor. Um, It sounds like wanted her to be like, come on, tear them apart. Ah, yeah. Um, Then it says, on Wednesday evening last February, the lobby of the Savan Theater buzzed with teens, 20 and 30-somethings, wearing t-shirts and distressed denim. Mm. One guy with a fur collar on his jacket had a neck tattoo of praying hands. (laughs) (laughs) Former NFL player Reggie Bush and his wife Lilit slipped into reserved seats toward the front row of the nearly 2,000 capacity theater. The stage was... What? Reserved seats. I know, but no. What? No. No, no. 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 
They have God. to because they're going to get mobbed if they have to go through, you know, crowds. Are, are people equal in Christ? Come on. Yes, but they're not equal in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, the stage was illuminated in blue and purple lights, and a keyboard stood in place of an organ. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but now I'm making a face because, oh, God, you go to these worship services, how much music are we going to be subjected to? (laughs) (laughs) And they're not playing the Beatles. Can't you just go in, get a good 20... 20-minute sermon, start a 20-second sermon, (laughs) be on your way. That does sound good. Okay, so I like this, though. Um, Judah wearing an oversized burnt orange button-down, black skinny jeans, and black leather boots opened his sermon by calling himself a Jesus guy and launched into the Old Testament story of Rahab, a prostitute who found faith against the odds. He talked with the smooth croon of a late night DJ. This is what you always talk about is how they all have the pastor. Yeah. Speak. Yep. Pastories. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, Threw his hands in the air. And then he says, uh, if your lifestyle in any way reflects or has some symmetry with Rahab, I could almost argue that God's with you a lot. God loves broken people. Um, I think that's nice. All right. You know, God doesn't judge broken people like the way that, you know, such and such as mother judged me back in our congregation. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the following Wednesday night, a group of baptisms took place in a small inflatable pool in the (laughs) lobby of the theater. I need to have a picture of how small that inflatable pool was. And if it's still hooked up to, like, the fan (laughs) thing that goes to the side where it's like... I know, but like, how much depth could they get there as far as water? Could you dunk all the way? Well, we will see. We'll look at the people who were <laughs> baptized and judge them. Um, so people crowded around the pool and they were cheering. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see. Okay, so then we get to then we get to a quote by Chelsea. Are we a religion? Sure, but it's not about doing everything right so that you're accepted by God or his community, says Chelsea. It's like you're already in with God. All you have to do is receive the gift of faith that's been given. Um, Then it says, it's a day before the aforementioned service, and she's at the kitchen table in her light-filled home, which is decorated with sleek modern furniture and sits at the end of a cul-de-sac high atop the Hollywood Hills. Church home, which operates a 501c3 organization, purchased the 28,000-square-foot four-bedroom home in 2016 for roughly $2.5 million as an investment in its future in Los Angeles. What does that mean? That's just facts. No, no, but it's a home. As Is it a house or it's a... Oh, no, it's their house. Sanctuary. It's a house where they live. Okay. Now, also... Prices in Los Angeles are a lot higher than any normal place. <laughs> right. So a 2.5 million home is probably more like uh, an $800,000 home somewhere else, maybe. But, so, uh, but he gets it tax-free? He gets to live there, but it's an investment from the church. Investment in... Well, so keep reading. <laughs> the church's total revenue last year was about $20 million. $18.5 million of that came from tithes, traditionally a tenth of congregants' incomes and offerings. They're not required to donate. Because Church Home is a nonprofit, it is exempt from federal income tax. Okay, so think about that. <laughs> you think about that a lot. But then I think, well, it's not like it's a company where they share profits. Doesn't it all just go into the church? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. (laughs) Well, they put their kids in public school, which is nice. They have three kids. Yeah, but it's LA where all the public schools are. Oh, no, no. (laughs) No, they're not. (laughs) Some of them are. I watch 
what did I say? I don't know. When I lived out there, we lived in Bel Air, which is the best zip code to live in out there. Not that the house was on par with <laughs> the zip code, <laughs> but the school that my roommate's kid had to go to was kind of rough. Right. And um, because there's so much money out there, the private schools are are definitely, you know, more plush and posh, and it's not Beverly Hills yeah. High School. Um, so let's see, especially if it's in the hills, it's kind of, that could be iffy. This you'll enjoy. Chelsea says she had an epiphany while sitting on the toilet reading People magazine. <laughs> God spoke to her, she explains. It wasn't a human voice, but rather a gush of intense emotion and then sensation of receiving a paragraph of thoughts in seconds. She's not much of a crier, she says, but in that moment, tears began to stream down her cheeks. She said she knew the celebrities in the article she was browsing could benefit from the gospel. They had to expand to Los Angeles. I felt such a deep sense of compassion, she says. It was a moment of feeling the heartbreak and the pain celebrities feel of achieving your dreams and realizing that you're still empty and the unique type of hopelessness that that is. And that is so true because you get everything you want and you're still the same you inside. Well, and people will say that all the time. Yeah, Things yeah. just don't change. Yeah. But that's so I thing. get why they gravitate. Right. Or Scientology. That's why Scientology is so popular there. Or yeah, anything with, you know, crystals and mysticism. You know, I guess it's all about that. Uh, and, and I'm sure... Community. Yeah. Did you feel that? So you were in Hollywood for how many years? Uh, eight. Really? Really? God, I was going to say like three or something. Um, I guess I split it up. I ignored you then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I went out there and then I went back and got a degree in journalism and then went back out. Oh, that's right. So you came across all these people who felt empty, I guess. Is it just like a big, <laughs> vapid row of people everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> the people who I was friends with who were successful as actors were pretty grounded and normal and that was fun right um but some of the executives who i dealt with had uh, one of the reasons i left their their values just did not meet with what mine were the the importance put on hosting a birthday party for your 4 year old was was just it was just um, over the top and yeah, they put way too much importance on that and screamed at their assistant once about how the party favors that they leave with weren't right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about image and even though it, they're using their kid for that. Yep. And they, and their kids were nasty <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, but could do no wrong. It, um, yeah, there was just, there was a lot of, there were a lot of values that I just didn't get down with. Um, but what did you ask me? I was just wondering, like, oh, if everybody there, vapid. Yeah, if there's just a lot of, especially the up and comers. So I um, had a friend. And I think I've said this on the podcast before. We've touched on some of the celebrity stuff, but I had a friend who drove a limo for a few years there. And of course, it was, you know, the Robert De Niro's who were just real and kind and nice. And then it was like Vin Diesel, who was, <laughs> don't you know who I am type thing. There, I always think of middle management. You know, and like right. they're they're just strivers and posturing while the other people who, you know, are just plugging away, doing the hard work, right, being quality, yeah, who've just their work just rises to the top exactly. Well, I looked yeah. up, um, is that article finished? 
Well, I did want to mention, (laughs) it is a long article, but um, there's one more part that I really liked. Okay, go ahead with that, because then I'll get into something. Okay, so regarding his 2005 comments on abortion, Judah says, through his publicist, we have grown significantly in the past 15 years. I wouldn't agree with my approach when I was a young pastor on many issues and understand that no life decision is easy. We hope to be a loving home for humanity, no matter what someone has experienced. When I asked Chelsea what she would say to a member of her congregation considering an abortion, she is quick to clarify that unlike a priest, a pastor, at least church home, isn't meant to provide counsel. She says, we know what we're good at, which is the Bible and Jesus and telling his story. And we know what we're not good at. There are amazing trained professional psychologists and counselors for that. That's why on the Church Home Global app, the Smiths titled a section of videos, question and response rather than question and answer. Um, so after they spend a couple days together, the writer calls her back a few weeks later to ask more questions. For instance, what is Church Home's position on LGBTQ members, for example? She says, every individual is entitled to their own persuasion. It's not our job to persuade. It's just our job to proclaim. They feel just as loved and welcome and part of our community, she says. Have Judah's, chain, or have Judah's views on homosexuality changed since 2005? We are a church who love and welcome people regardless of their beliefs or background, he says. Would church home be open to having a gay pastor? After a long pause, Chelsea says, we're very much in the category of we love everybody. God is for everybody and God's heart is for people. So our hearts are for people and that is where we land. Absolutely. A response, certainly, but not an answer. Mm -hmm. That's just so snarky. Well, what? I, it seems like they're just really trying to be inclusive. Well, I don't know. I think this is the church that um, uh, Christopher Pratt. What's his name? No, it's not. Okay. Cause, yeah, I left. I left part of that out. Okay. And that's the one that Ellen. Right, right. Because I thought he yeah. went to the one that Justin Bieber went to. Apparently not. And I left okay. that part out because we had talked we had talked about that one in a previous episode. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So you oh, and, and I, at one point, yeah, you and I at one are, point, you and ahead. I, you what? Okay, um, that- you and I are different <laughs> on this approach because you see something positive in it, and I see something negative in it, which is totally fine. I mean, we both like people to be loving and wonderful and inclusive. I just don't subscribe to there being a God and that, you know, having any kind of organized religion watered down to appeal to the masses makes it any better than ones that don't. But, I mean... But That's people weird. like community. Yeah, I just think that it's still a community that will look towards a pastor or whoever's on the podium for, quote, the answers yeah. to things and ways to vote and what's right and wrong and interpretation of the Bible and all that. So, that's what I sort of see that bugs me because I think it's just, yeah, I think it's like, Hey, let's be hip. Let's be cool. Let's get all the people involved, but it's still indoctrination that then influences society that then influences voting that then influences policies. And I don't, I don't like the, the branches that it produces to talk biblically. Yeah. I, I, and I totally get that. I just think so many people aren't capable of figuring things out themselves. (laughs) (laughs) That's an awful thing to say, No, but see, that would be great. It would be great if there was something that met on Sundays, sort of like the universalist church, but, where there's a therapist up there talking (laughs) about like good mental health and community. Wouldn't that be just 
that would be good. And that way people are not subscribing to something that they feel if I don't subscribe to this, I will be going to eternal hell, you know? Yep. And just what you said makes me think, well, this church doesn't seem to be telling people that they are if they don't. I don't know. I would love to go out there and visit one. Okay. That, uh, let's start a GoFundMe um, send Bonnie to church and we'll get you out there. You bring the, uh, wear your gamer headphone set the whole time and see what happens. I think I'm, I've missed the community. I miss the organization, the whole idea that they're getting together to do drives and stuff. I mean, I'm involved in that to a certain degree, you know, but a lot of it is with uh, my company. I think you're getting, um, you're getting, um, you're getting sucked in because what is your one thing that you say you dislike is organized religion. And you're like, I no, I say it. organization of religion is where the trouble starts. Right. <laughs> so see, you want a community. I think I am going to look up a universalist church down where you are. Okay. And there's actually, um, there's atheist gatherings too. Like people are saying that community is missing totally. And I think that's just such an American issue anyway. It is. I think you're right. We're a, we're a giant stupid country. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Feel free to edit that out. (laughs) But but I that's why when I go, I'm sorry, but that's when I go to London and they have pubs. Right. It feels like, okay, it's a public house. These are your neighbors. They're not clubs. They close at 11, but it's you're going to meet your neighbors there. Exactly. That's like the neighborhood I live in. I am. I know. Well, good for you. Why don't you move here? <laughs> I'm telling you, I was just talking to someone who's thinking of moving to my neighborhood. So I live in one of those almost Disney Worldish neighborhoods um, where you have retail at the front um, and then people organize events or book clubs or whatever. And it's the first time in my life that I could be, I could go and have a drink at our like pub every night mm-hmm. of the week with a different friend. And I've never had that in my life. Like, ever. yeah. So I planned out this cause I knew when my kids go off to school right. and I am an alcoholic for five years, <laughs> I need that kind of support. I need community just like you're saying. And yeah, you know, I don't want to be like, well, let me go to this Baptist church and find it. And then, right. Yeah. And you know what? And that's a, another thing I miss about being on the Upper West Side in New York. It was a community. It's a tiny little neighborhood with a with a pile of people. But we were we would go to Central Park before nine in the morning. You could have your dogs off leash. Yeah. So you'd go and you'd hook up with the same people, hang out in the park, talk, make friends, watch your dogs run around. Um, and then the place I worked, we were a hub of the community. So you saw people. I'd walk on the street and it was like being a little tiny celebrity, you know, <laughs> you'd say hi to all your friends and all the dogs that you knew. Um, so yeah, I, I admit I miss that. And I think most of America is not little communities like you have and like I had on the Upper West Side. We're very isolated. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I love that. I'm not going to lie. Right. Right. I mean, that's, that's it. Like we're all missing that. So I have a friend who doesn't really prescribe to a lot of church stuff, but she goes to church. She's older than I am. And she said to me once, Karen, I'll tell you that when my husband died, Mm -hmm. I was so glad to have a church. You know, like, right, sure, yeah, to have that community because otherwise it's very lonely. That's why our Facebook groups get hopping because I think yeah. people just really 
yeah, just need some kind of community in some way. When my grandmother died, my grandfather was, he was like, I'm not staying here. And so he went to a place that had assisted living as an option right. for later. Yeah. But what he went to was basically a college dorm situation with no classes. Right. And they had a cafeteria for every, not even a cafeteria, a dining room for all of their meals. He had his own apartment. And then, you know, the amount of ladies that outnumbered the uh-huh. men. Mm-hmm. He was catnip I know. to all of these ladies. I would go visit him, and he would have food in there. And I'm like, where did you get all this food? Oh, this woman brought me this, and this woman brought me <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. I bet. Yeah, that's it. Like, and, and that's what I feel like almost in my neighborhood. I'm like, it's like an old folks uh, retirement community, but for young people where right. it's like, do you want to come to this event? Come on down. Yeah. And yeah, that's fantastic. I think everyone needs that. Yeah. And that's what I think these things in Hollywood are providing. So I looked up something when you were there. Did you ever hear of oh Hollywood Prayer Network? No. So it seems like this organization that branches out in lots of different um, events and uh, categories. So like they have outreaches, they have uh, classes if people want to learn acting, but <laughs> in a, exactly to, you know, staying with the whole Christian theme. Um, Let me see. Okay. Their mission statement is to challenge and mobilize Christian individuals. They could have just said Christians. Okay. Um, Small groups and churches to pray for Hollywood, the world's most influential marketplace, and to have every Christian working in the entertainment industry prayed for by Christians outside of the industry. And then it goes on about using entertainment to build up the, you know, Christian environment and all that stuff. So it seems Mm -hmm. anything that has org at the end, I feel is very like official and all that. It could just be, you know, no one's heard of it, but it seems like it's pretty involved. And then I looked up influential Christians in Hollywood. Uh huh. First of all, <laughs> I'm the pause. Exactly. I, there's one I bet that we've talked about before who's going to surprise you. Okay. First of all, they have like Carrie Underwood, who I don't think of as Hollywood. So any singers, mm-hmm. any of the football players, I'm I'm getting rid of those. I don't think that right. counts. Okay. And then I'm going to say something that is not controversial, but can be <laughs> alarming to, to hear someone say out loud, but I'm... There's also where African Americans have been, you know, colonized with this religious um, upbringing. So uh, you see a lot of them that are African American actors, Denzel Washington, um, a few others. But the like, are you saying that the likelihood is that they grew up in a strong, yeah, yeah, and that they background to start with, right? And they feel they have to stay with that. Now it says Tom Hanks, and I Hmm. I looked up Tom Hanks, and it's like he was raised Mormon, and someone's Catholic, and he says God once in a while. So I it's (laughs) it's reaching, it's a bit reaching there. But some of my favorites. you have Kirk Cameron. Is he really we knew. an actor? Let's Kristen Chenoweth, who I've known. Oh yes. But she's she's not powerful, I wouldn't say. Oh she's big. Yeah. Powerful, I don't know, but yeah. Then Cameron, nope, Candace Cameron Bure, who's all over the Hallmark channel. 
And I like right. her. She's like adorable. Good, good, good hair. Then we have Angus T. Jones. Do you remember? Oh, sure. So, oh, yeah. What do you know about him? He quit two and a half men because he didn't agree with the preachings. That's, I mean, the, <laughs> he didn't agree with the um, very, very foul point of view. Right. And he calls it filth. And so he's yep. definitely done that. Um, I think one of the most powerful Christians that I would see from Tennessee and Hollywood right now is Tyler Perry, mostly his mm-hmm. friendship with Oprah and all the things that he does, you know, he seems like a good guy. But here's some of my favorites. You have Gary Busey. Cry, cry. Who I think we could probably, I mean, my first reaction to Gary Busey is a little, little off. Let's add in Mel Gibson then. <laughs> a little racist. Let's stir in Chuck Norris. Um. <laughs> and then a little sprinkle of Stephen Baldwin, who's yeah. batshit crazy. And then one of my favorite um, ones is... I know who you're going to say. Mark Wahlberg. So oh. I was looking, and you know how Ranker.com's like lists, or ranks, we would like to say, um, top Christians in Hollywood. And then underneath it, Mm -hmm. it'll say other things you might be interested in. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So it says rudest actors. And those actors... Don't click on that. Don't click on that. (laughs) You're going to get malware. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. It's to another one of their articles. Okay. Some of the ones I just mentioned are also on the rudest actor list. Mark Wahlberg, um, uh, Mel Gibson. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, it just goes in a circle. But I I heard something about Mark Wahlberg the other day. So he's sort of... He doesn't seem like he's accepted that loving part of Christianity, but you know that he was almost on one of the 9-11 flights out of Pennsylvania? No. Yeah, he, I don't know if he missed the flight, he got kicked off, there were something. Kicked off. Not kicked (laughs) off, sorry. (laughs) That would have been good. (laughs) And if we had any real reach, we'd be in trouble for making that slip. I know, I know. Uh, but he didn't get on it for some reason. Maybe he missed the flight. I don't know. But it was this whole, like, you know, if I had been on that flight, everything would have gone differently. I would have been up in that cockpit, and this whole 9-11 thing would have ended a lot differently. No. Like, I know. He didn't say that. He did, too. <laughs> So then they, like, say Patricia Heaton, and just, there's no one except for Tom Hanks, who I still don't think uses a Christian influence in any way, because I didn't know he was a Christian. Some of them are just, maybe they mention God, or they have an overall belief in God, Um, but I have heard, like, Patricia Heaton has been outspoken. Yeah, I think a lot of them, I think, are crazy, weird, rude. <laughs> I think I think Marky Mark probably embraced it because he's got a lot of kids to raise. He needs a village. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, wasn't he, is he from Boston? You got that Irish Catholic or something sure. thing going. Yeah. Yeah. But he needs, I think he needs help with those kids. Well, find us on all the social media. The Instagram is super fun. Twitter once in a while. And then our Facebook, which is Deconversion Therapy. And please send us your funny letters, your true stories. Make it better than Bonnie's mother's (laughs) Arby story. And um, yeah, that's it. I guess the story, it was, I went to Arby's and it was good. 
<laughs> That's just a compound <laughs> sentence. <Just> a com- <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure to use that one on her next. <laughs> uh, all right. Have a great week. And whatever Bonnie says, don't go to church. No, I'm joking. <laughs> church on me. I know. Uh, don't be a ship pile. And we love you with all our little measly hearts. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.